In this question, we have a piecewise defined function, and we're asked if the derivative at 0 exists. To figure that out, we can use the limit definition of the derivative. We can use either one we want, but f prime of 0 is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 over h. A couple things to note. Well, first of all, by looking here, I know that f of 0 is 0 by definition. That means this thing is 0. Also, I don't need 0 plus h. I could have just written h in place of the parentheses. So we can use this function to simplify this fraction. This is the limit as h goes to 0 of... Okay, so we're dividing by h. I'm not going to put anything because this is 0. And f of h is h squared over 3 divided by h. The reason is h is not equal to 0, therefore we're using this part of the definition. So we have h squared times sine of 3 over h, that thing. To solve this limit, we can cancel the h from the denominator, and the limit we're trying to solve is the limit as h goes to 0 of h times sine of 3 over h. If this limit exists, that means the derivative at 0 also exists. So can we prove that this limit exists? I think so, and I'll do that on the next slide. To solve this limit, we're going to use the squeeze theorem. So what we want to do is look at the function h times sine of 3 over h goal is you want to find a function that is smaller than it and one that is larger than it where these two have the same limit as we approach zero because that will force this to also have that same limit too. Another important fact will be that if you look at sine of any angle, it's always trapped between negative one and positive one. So this will be important here. So how do we actually come up with these two functions? I'm going to start by looking at sine of three over h and building from there. So let's see. As long as h is not equal to 0, sine of 3 over h is trapped between 1 and negative 1 because of this fact here. It doesn't matter what you put here. Wherever it's defined, this is a true statement. I want an h here. So what you could do is multiply through this inequality by h. The only issue is that h can sometimes be negative if we're approaching 0 and a negative will flip the direction of the inequalities. So to fix this, I'm going to multiply through by not h, but by the absolute value of h, which is always positive. Here's what we get. Negative the absolute value of h is less than or equal to the absolute value of h times sine of 3 over h, and that's less than or equal to positive the absolute value of h. The thing to note is, as h goes to 0, this will go to 0, and this will go to 0, which means this limit goes to 0. The second thing to note is, because this side's negative and this side is positive, we can actually just replace this absolute value of h with simply h itself, which will give us this. Negative the absolute value of h is less than or equal to h times sine of 3 over h is less than or equal to the absolute value of h. And essentially, we are there. The thing to note is that, on the left, the limit as h goes to 0 of negative the absolute value of h is 0. And the limit as h goes to 0 of just the absolute value of h is 0, 2. Because this function, for all values of h not equal to 0, is trapped between these two limits, it must have the same limit. So from all of this, from these two facts, we can conclude the limit as h goes to 0 of h times sine of 3 over h is equal to 0, 2. This limit was equal to the limit on the previous page, which was f prime of 0. It exists because it is equal to 0, and we prove that by using the squeeze theorem.